Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. We are on the 24th part. In Surah Zumar, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about groups of people being admitted into hell and groups of people being admitted into Jannah and paradise. The thing to bear, to ma- bear in mind here is that this theme has been repeated within the Quran on several occasions which suggests that as communities we have a fixed identity as well beyond the individual identity. And if we share within the community identity in their outlook, in their practices, in their cultures, then we can share the fate of the community. And therefore, if the community is one that is an evil community, then they will all share an evil fate in hell. And if the community is a good community, then they will all share a happy fate in a good destiny. So it is always advisable to keep company within good group of people. In this surah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, consoling the individuals, قُلْ يَا عِبَادِيَ الَّذِينَ أَسْرَفُوا عَلَىٰ أَنفُسِهِمْ لَا تَقْنُطُوا مِنْ رَحْمَةِ اللَّهِ Say, O oh my slaves, who have been extravagant upon their souls, do not become hopeless of the mercy of Allah. In Allah يَغْفِرُ الدُّنُوبَ جَمِيعًا Indeed, Allah forgives all sins. إِنَّهُ هُوَ الْغَفُورُ rahim Indeed, He is most forgiving, most merciful. This verse in itself should impel us towards goodness. So long as we have breaths that we breathe, there are opportunities. And every breath is a golden opportunity to make it back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to pass the test of this world. And in any case, Allah says, وَأَنِيبُوا إِلَىٰ رَبِّكُمْ وَأَسْلِمُوا لَهُ مِنْ قَبْلِ أَنْ يَأْتِيَكُمُ الْعَضَابُ ثُمَّ لَا تُنْسَرُونَ Yearn, turn yearningly to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and surrender to Him before the coming of the chastisement when you shall not be helped at all. And follow the best of what has been revealed to you before the chastisement comes to you suddenly and you are unaware. This verse does not only talk about qiyamah, but I think it talks about the point of death, that suddenly the point of death will come and at that point, we will be at a loss and then the people will cry out, as Allah says, تَقُولْ نَفْسٌ يَا حَسْرَةَ عَلَى مَا فَرَّتُ فِي جَنْبِ اللَّهِ And the person will say, Oh, great loss and regret for what I have done in not being obedient to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So on the one hand, we are told, do not be hopeless of the mercy of God. He can forgive each and every sin. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala here is saying without any restriction. So even if we've wronged other people and we've tried to make amends and they are still displeased but we have become sincere, then Allah can forgive on their behalf and Allah can make them pleased enough to forgive us. And even if they don't forgive, then Allah can overrule anybody else's displeasure. And Allah knows best how He does these things. Then there is a verse here. When the people are admitted into paradise, here, when they come to the door of the paradise, قَالَ لَهُمْ خَزَنَتُهَا The keepers of paradise will say, سَلَامٌ عَلَيْكُمْ Peace be with you. Tiptum, You have been good, wholesome. فَدْخُلُوهَا خالدين. Enter the paradise, living therein forever. And then the inhabitants of paradise who go inside there say this, وَقَالُوا وَالْحَمْدُ لِلَّهِ الَّذِي صَدَقَنَا وَعْدَهُ الْحَمْدُ لِلَّهِ Praise be to Allah, the one who has been true in what He promised to us. وَأَوْرَثَنَا الْأَرْضِ And He made us the heirs of the earth. نَتَبَوَّأُوا مِنَ الْجَنَّةِ حَيْثُ نَشَاءُ We go whereabouts we want, wherever we want in Jannah, and as and how we want. So here, the earth of Allah is called the Jannah, the paradise. Not in all instances is earth called Jannah, but obviously for a group of people who are going to a particular Jannah, the earth will be their Jannah. And Allah says in the Quran, the day in which earth and the heavens will be turned into other than the earth and the heavens. So when people say this earth is paradise, eventually in other faiths like Christianity, we find that it does resonate with the sentiment of the Quran. The end of this surah has a verse which is then repeated 
in the next surah. وَتَرَى الْمَلَائِكَ حَافِينَ مِنْ حَوْلِ الْعَرْشِ And you will see the angels rotating around the arsh or hovering around the arsh. يُسَبِّحُونَ بِحَمْدِ رَبِّهِمْ Praising the praise of their Lord. وَقُضِّيَ بَيْنَهُمْ بِالْحَقِّ And the decisive judgment will be done. وَقِيلَ الْحَمْدُ لِلَّهِ رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ And it would, have been, and it would say, in, in, in which it would be said, Praise be to Allah, the Lord of the worlds. And in fact, Allah says this often in the Quran through the angels when there is an end of a particular story. So here on the day of Qiyamah. In any case, this particular verse is repeated somewhat in the next surah, Al-Ghafir in the same juz. الَّذِينَ يَحْمِلُونَ الْعَرْشِ وَمَنْ حَوْلَهُ And the people who carry the arsh and those who are around the arsh. يُسَبِّحُونَ بِحَمْدِ رَبِّهِمْ they do tasbih, praise of their Lord. وَيُؤْمِنُونَ بِهِ And they have faith with the Lord. وَيَسْتَغْفِرُونَ لِلَّذِينَ آمَنُوا And they seek forgiveness for those who believe, apparently those who believe and who are yet in the life of the earth. And this is what they say, رَبَّنَا وَسِعْتَ كُلَّ شَيْنَ رَحْمَةً وَعِلْمَةً O our Lord, you encompass all things with your mercy and your knowledge. فَاغْفِرْ لِلَّذِينَ تَابُوا وَاتَّبَعُوا سَبِيلَكَ Thus forgive the people who do tawbah, who turn to you repentant, وَاتَّبَعُوا سَبِيلَكَ And who follow your path. وَقِهِمْ عَذَابَ الْجَحِيمِ And save them from the chastisement of Jahim. And O Lord, cause them to enter within the Garden of Eden that you have promised them. And cause whoever has been righteous amongst their fathers, their spouses and their children. So here people are going into paradise with their parents, with their spouses and their children. Not to say that their parents and their children will be old or young. They will all be of the same age, but yet they were related as fathers and children and mothers and brothers and wives in this world and husbands. And, and then they say, in the Kantil Azizul Hakim, Waqihimu Sayyat, save them from the evils that they have committed. And those who have been saved from the evils that they have committed on this day, on the day of Qiyamah, are the people who you have indeed saved and have had mercy upon. And that would be the greatest achievement. Now, we do not know who these people are who are around the Arsh. Are these the noble souls of the prophets? Are these the grand angels? Are these other souls that are very sympathetic towards the sons of Adam? Are these the ones that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks to Iblis about when Iblis refuses to do sajda and Allah says, Astakbartam kunta min al Have you behaved arrogantly or are you from the lofty ones? Are these the lofty ones? Are these the celestial beings of the grand prophets of the Prophet Muhammad and his divine family? We do not know and we do not have clarity from the Hadith literature and all these Things are pointed to that they are grand, grand angels or they are the great prophets or they are the final prophet and his family. The final thing in this surah is the, sorry, in this juz is the surah ghafir in which we have the story of Mu'min Ali Fir'aun that when Moses and Harun go to the Pharaoh, there is a person within the group of the people of the Pharaoh in his court who is secretly a believer. Now we don't know his identity fully. Is he a prophet or is he a saint or is he a great believer? In any case, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sets aside two and a half to three sides of the Quran relaying the conversation this Mu'min Ali Fir'aun has with the Pharaoh in which he is admonishing them that these people, if they are saying a lie, then they will find its chastisement. And if they are saying the truth, then you must take heed. Yusuf came to you. You thought nobody else will come to you after Yusuf, but Moses has come. So it shows that the Pharaoh and his people already understood the history that Joseph did go to them, and they had already retained that history. So he was basing it on their points of references, on their knowledge base, on their history to make a case. In any case, Finally, he says, فَسَتَذْكُرُونَ مَا أَقُولُ لَكُمْ Indeed, you shall remember everything that I'm saying to you. And he at this point becomes hopeless. 
And then he totally gives himself over to Allah and he says, وَأُفَوِّدُ أَمْرِي إِلَى اللَّهِ إِنَّ اللَّهَ بَصِيرٌ بِالْعِبَادِ I give my affairs, or I hand my affairs over to Allah. Allah witnesses whatever his ibad, his slaves do. In response, the Quran says, فَوَقَاهُ اللَّهُ سَيَّاتِ مَا مَكَرُوا And Allah saved him from the evils that they conspired against him. Imam Ali says in a hadith that the one who says this, أُفَوِّدُ أَمْرِي إِلَى اللَّهِ then Allah will definitely respond in a similar fashion and save them from all the conspiracies that are being conspired against them. So it is something for us to say and indeed we say this in the morning, Fajr prayers. Wassalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.